Hey, and welcome guys to another little tutorial. Well, it's not really a tutorial. It's more of a show off of a design that I'm designing right now. Since I got a little bit of time and I want to make something a little bit more flexible for you guys. So, I've started with making more of an ability based like script like scripts because well, I've been looking at a lot of games and you know there's a lot of shooters out there that including let's say Team Fortress 2 to Blacklight to other games some of the abilities are only usable by certain classes like let's say uh, on Team Fortress 2 the heavy gunner he's got a heavy gun he's not like super fast and stuff and you know, then there's the invisibility guy, you know, and these are all really great subjects and stuff, but how do we code something like that into our game? Well, I've been thinking about it because I've been in school and, well, it, it's something I think that would interest a lot of players because... You know some classes can't run then some classes can't go up ladders and it's more of a, a, a player model base you know like you know there's uh, let's say Max Payne he's got pistols that have unlimited ammunition but they're two-handed or one-handed and then there's you know maybe a uh, solid snake that you know picks up a gatling gun and can use it just perfectly fine you know and that's kind of cool so all these different characters and they all have different abilities so let's script something like that into our games you know by default you're probably like well that's that's just that's just crazy insane too much work and to be honest with you, what you're probably already doing when it comes to scripting stuff in the game with your if statements, bulls, checks, and using enums and using uh, just different variety of things. And then you make one script try to do all these different cases. Well, yeah. You know, I can see the usefulness for it. There is some cases where it works just fine. But the more you add into the game, the more complex it becomes. And the more complex, the more errors, and then more testing. Okay, so you're going to be doing more testing. So I've devised a kind of a weapon system that I think is going to be a good little pattern to run with. You know, probably, I, I kind of use this kind of logic in my game that I'm designing for my personal, you know, stuff. And in some of my weapons, some of my guns use no animations whatsoever. It's all done by code. And then others use nothing but straight animations. And to make those cases and things where it doesn't do that and one or the other or use a variety of both you have to have a lot of different ifs else and enums more bulls and i find that this is a little bit more memory than we actually need and it uses more cpu to sit there and have more if statements in your because it causes because it the computer has to evaluate that okay so, in most cases, it's probably better just to write for that specific case, right? You're like, well, I have a shotgun. I just make a script that does nothing but the shotgun, okay? But here's the gotcha. Because you did it that way, you go and you want another gun, but now you, you've got to integrate the shotgun logic with your rifle logic. And you're like, well, this kind of sucks, but you can do it, right? 
Yeah, it is possible. But if you use that and then want to integrate maybe a, another type of system in it, let's say some type of like system that goes, hey, I want you to have this specific scope, this specific skin, and well, this system has to interact with all the guns. Then you're like, whoa, this is going to be insane hard because now I've got to integrate this one specific system into all these different gun types that I just scripted. And you're like, well, this is becoming very, very headache-ish. And you're right. It, it, it can be. There is a way around some of it, and then there's other ways to work with it. A lot of my logic and things that I'm going to use is going to be for inheritance. And you're like, well, you don't have a lot of stuff about inheritance on your channel. And that's right, because I don't find it useful for most cases. And it's, it's true. And plus, it's a little bit harder to explain. Because you have to learn how inheritance works. And some people, you know, argue it's easier than some who go, no, it's harder because now you have to know what you're doing. And yeah, it's, it's true. It is. So let's take it slow. We have this light gunner script. It, I know it's probably harder to see and stuff, but in this case, we have... I wish I had a zoom, but I really don't. We have a melee, a handgun, and a light rifle in this class. And that's our light gun. Then we have a heavy rifle, you know, which has the heavy rifle ability. Now, each one of these variables is named something different. It's not sequential, okay? Like, this isn't weapon slot 1, 2, or 3. It, it, it's numbered. In such a way where we know what ones it is. So when we go in the code and we write certain things, this is all the same. If it's slot, if it's the script for heavy weapons, it will always be weapon slot 4 and vice versa. I mean, if it wants to check and have weapon slot 2, it doesn't exist. So what it, does it do? We can write code where when it tries to send information to our player, like let's say a pickup or you know, or something that we bought, it can go, hey, weapon slot 2 does not exist. And then we can throw up, player cannot use this type of weapon or throw up an error. You know, it's all in how you want to design. Me? My purpose is I'm going to eliminate the ability for a heavy gunner to use pistols. He's he can't use pistols. Okay, that's that's the job of the heavy gunner. He can only use light rifles, melee, and heavy rifles. The light gunner is limited to light rifles, handguns, and melee. And then our medic soldier, he can only use handguns. Melee and a med pack or some type of healing ability to heal other players around him. Okay, that's his abilities. Now, you're probably like, well, this looks like uh, th these all look like classes right here. These slots are classes, classes that are designed to do one specific thing one for melee combat, two for any type of light rifle action and then medic stuff so they do one specific job and they do it at the fastest possible way they can so let's look at some code for this okay 
swappy do 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 okay so we have our golden gun here which is a sniper rifle class it's inherited from sniper rifle well sniper rifle is a pretty basic class it's just a mono behavior but it's abstract and it's got these virtual functions. These virtual functions are just update and start. Okay. Which you're used to. You're used to. So we do not put functions or anything in this logic right here. Instead, we use an inherited class. Which is our, not our sniper rifle. But our golden gun or whatever class we are making okay we inherit from sniper rifle because this is the type that we want the only thing that this sniper rifle class does is the logic for sniper the the rifle that you're creating it for let's say you want an instant kill rifle that kills anything it's it it, it kills anything that you want but it's very very slow okay it has you know it's very slow or just instantly killed them. well that's fine you know that's great okay but then you're like well then I want to create another gun that does the same thing well you can use the same Gordon gun script to do that as long as the, the logic that you need fits it the reason why i would like an inheritance class like this is some rifles sniper rifles could be a five cartridge five bullet magazine after five bullets it reloads a magazine some you might you know say need a uh, some type of special case where it's a bolt action rifle well it needs to animate you know pull back a, the bolt and eject a you know a bullet out an empty one and then stick another one in and there you go well yeah that's cool but you're like well i could just use a big script like we did before and yeah i guess you could you know i mean there's nothing wrong with it. Just amp up the damage to an insane amount and then just put the reload time really, really slow. But you don't have an animation after you shoot, which kind of stinks. So then you're like, well, we could just put an if statement somewhere and check bull and stuff. And it, you know, then it becomes messy because every single weapon that you use, this one has to evaluate all these if statements. And we want to eliminate that. Okay. If it doesn't have two, two different types of states where, you know, it, it's got a, a cartridge or, you know, it needs to reload like passively, like one each bullet at a time, then, you know, the, the whole goal of it is to make a script like this. That does one specific thing really good and you eliminate all the if statements because more scripts isn't really going to hurt your program okay it's not going to hurt your program to have more scripts as long as they are very efficient and they're you know the number of scripts that run isn't really really high and using a lot of CPU then you'll be fine. I mean, instantiating a game object with a script on it is very minimal. I mean, everybody does it. Every, you know, if you have an RTS game, they're going to have a script on each one of those little guys walking around doing stuff. You know, you're going to have something. But by doing it this way, we can eliminate shotgun logic that doesn't need to be in here we can elim eliminate a lot of if statements making this script more performant you know it, it does 
a lot less evaluation. And that's that's the whole point. Okay, you don't want it to do evaluations. If you can skip like three or four if statements, that's just more performance you'll get out of your game. And the best thing about it, if you got a really, really low computer and it runs like 60 frames no problem, then the people that have higher grade computers, they're going it's gonna run even better. Or let's say you're trying to target a mobile platform. Memory is a problem. RAM and stuff, there it's it's a lot less. So you're gonna to have to find a way to be more efficient when it comes to scripts and or assets, you know. Evaluations big time will, you know, either hurt you or help you. You know, and doing a slot based thing, you know, if you don't want a class to have a handgun type, then you just do not add slot two to our thing. Like this sharpshooting class right here for snipers, it's got slot five, slot two. And everyone has a melee. I mean, they, they should always have a melee class. I mean, come on. If you can't, you know, unequip, like, what type of gun that you have. Well, not gun, but if you do not want your player to have melee stuff, you know. I, I look at it this way. I like melee to be there because there's going to be times where you run out of ammo. Or, or my personal favorite, maybe your melee class, you want to make ninja swords, that's a melee class, and everyone can sit there and run around and try to chop people up, you know, the go, go all ninja on. That's cool. That's great. Oh, and my personal favorite. My personal best favorite. You need an automatic gun that is a two-handed, a two-hander, like double guns. You know, you have uh, two nine-millimeter machine guns, and you want the player to be able to dual weapons. Well, all you have to do is make another slot class. In the class that you want this to have the ability, we just we just add it here. And because the slot class takes care of everything that you need that logic to do, then you know here you go. You just write what you need here, skipping all these different cases and emails. Okay, you just basically write the script that it needs and what it needs to do. And the best thing about this is when you inherit like this, let's say you need a variable for what skin you need, what um, scopes you want, or maybe you want no scope. You can change it around any which way you want. Now, you could just have a game object there and then program, you know, a script to do what you want and then just turn the game object off without having to inherit anything. Yeah, that's that's fine. But would you want it that way? Okay. Because the way that I have it set up and stuff in my slot class, I want this variable to be filled in. That way I could call functions into here. Like if I go up and say I want my gun to just be put away when I pause. Well, I don't want to make a function, a bunch of if statements that go do this. Okay? Or turn off my guns or make them invisible. I want a one call thing coming from 
my uh, parent class, like my sniper class, I want to make a function that goes pick up, it does what it needs to do. If uh, I need the sniper rifle to, you know, go left or right or whatever, I want just one specific call in this class right here that is part of, let's say, weapon manager. And it needs to say, put all guns away. Well, because this weapon manager has it, when we override and make the sniper class or whatnot, we'll have access to that function, okay? And because we're using inheritance, all we have to do is call the parent. The weapon manager class, we can do, we can use the static reference and then call put away gun, you know, the function that we have a virtual for. And because of this class being set up this way, Every one of the classes that inherit from this, we will overwrite and write our own logic in here. Like each of these slot classes, if the game object is active, put it away. You know, it, it makes it very easy to write. But if we made if statements and else statements, if else if it would be man it would be a long problem because every single one of these slots we would have to make logic that goes hey you can't do that or hey you can't do this and it kind of sucks I'm not gonna lie I think that would kind of suck and then it would pull more memory than it needs to. Okay? We have three slots. We have three different types. We have four different types. We have a demo. And, you know, and, 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 oh, and the other thing is if we had one class do everything, how are we going to limit this stuff? How, how are we going to have it rejected? We would have to, each one of these slots, make an if uh, if else statement or a bool that goes can I accept and go yes or no so out of my five different types that we'll have like these slot classes right here we would have to go in here to the slot class and for each one of these we would have to have a bool and this would have to be public so that when we call to put a weapon in it would go hey can we accept this no or hey can we accept this and that would be an evaluation that we don't need because it's already going to evaluate probably the string to know what weapon it has so it can reject it the reason why i want this string compare is to go hey do we already have this weapon if we already had this weapon, then don't do it. Because when I call to spawn the weapon in, I'm going to have it in its own little private space here that will evaluate a string like so. I'll probably have it go like this, public virtual void. Spawn gun, and I'll have a string temp gun. Okay, and I would put this in the parent class. Oh, uh, actually, I don't have a parent class for this. That's okay because they're individual scripts, which is fine. I mean, that's fine. So in this one, in our about if temp gun does not or 
this equals equals what did I call it up here name the equals equals name then we have it return right we have it we want it to return we don't want it to do anything in here so it will not spawn a gun so we have this if statement and then we'll do else if which is fine actually we probably we, we will probably not do that we'll, we would probably go equals name not namespace name silly and then we would go resource resources dot load and in this thing we would go game object not game logic game object Tim equals resources dot load and we would have this a string here not that one Ugh. not that one and this would be a string okay which is fine I mean it would be Uh, no, this is already a string. Temp gun. Okay. And this would be a function as game object. Okay. It would be a game object. But instead of doing all this and everything we would do an instanti unity engine dot instan really we can't what unity engine collections we can't instantiate? That's really weird. Well, that really sucks. Really? Instant. Well, I don't even like that. That stinks. I know I'm not. Am I spelling that wrong? Oh, here. Instantiate. Instantiate. Resource dot loading. Ah, here's instantiate. Why can't we do? Why can't I call this? Instantiate. That makes no sense. E engine or is it ascending from game game 
object dot. Ah, there we go. I was wondering what the heck was going on there. I was like, huh? What? Really? Seriously? And we just instantiate it and, you know, do our logic there or whatever. But, um, I was like, what? Really? Huh? Seriously? For real? Ugh. I was like, instantiate. Okay, C sharp, pure class like this. And it and you need game object in front of it and do a function. Okay, that's cool. I'm cool with that and everything. All right. Very weird, but okay. And well, we do our instantiate from resource loading. You know, if you don't know how to use resource load, then please look it up. It's not hard. You just you have to have a resources folder. And then put the game object in there, and the, the name that you pass in has to be correct to spawn it. It uses this string and loads it from a name. Because the regular instantiate does not, it wants a game object. Which, you know, kind of sucks, but eh, whatever, right? So. We have that there, which I guess is just perfectly fine. But we call functions that we need in wh whichever way we want. But the, the whole issue with this spawning guns is we already got this if statement here. If we made a single class that does a whole bunch of other stuff, then we have to have these other type of limits in there and those limits can come from a switch statement but then you have to find another way to go hey can we use this no it would be a pain it would be a pain so that's kind of the reason why I'm going in this direction we'll do the string compare and then we load the game object you know instantiate it and put it here for the reference and then after it's spawned, we will get the components, gun types, which, you know, should only be in slot two, because that's what it needs to do. Handguns, you know, in our main class of, like, sharpshooter or heavy guns or whatnot, we specifically make a function that directs it where it needs to go and that can be easily done by passing it um, a string here or some other types of name. I'm thinking about doing a uh, integer to make it easy with a, a switch statement that way it will do exactly what I want the default and all so I hope this helps you in understanding um, what a, the project that I'm trying to make right now and then after uh, probably next week or something like that or whenever I get the next bunch of times I will show you guys how to make weapons that will be uh, a little bit more useful for you something a little bit more flexible so I'm gonna let you guys go and uh, let some of this information soak in your head because there's a lot there and you might want to research inheritance a little bit more you know that way you can be like well what's he trying to do is this something that I may be interested in and if so let me know in the comments you know because your comments will actually dictate what kind of content I actually put out like I may not use um, asset bundles in there for my weapons and you might want me to use asset bundles so I'm gonna need to know so 
like, dislike, subscribe. Uh, you know the drill, guys, and do the YouTube stuff. And you know, it's your voice, it's your opinion. So take care and peace, and hope uh, you have a very nice day. It is Friday for me, so hopefully I get this up today, and uh, you know, do your thing. But uh, peace.